Some things are scarier when you have to do them alone. Just think about it for a second. Haunted houses, presenting in front of your class, or trying out for the team are all scarier when your friends aren't around. Things are simply better and less frightening when we can journey alongside other people. And church is the same way. We're not saying that faith is scary or frightening, but there are parts of it that are confusing. It's easy and natural to deal with doubts and struggles. All of that is less intimidating if you don't have to face it alone. And that's one of the reasons why we have small groups. We don't want church to just be a sit down and listen to lecture experience. It's not a monologue from the stage. We want it to be a dialogue, a conversation between you and others. The concept of small groups sounds nice, but I recognize that it might not be everyone's favorite thing to do. Maybe you're not even sure why we do them. You may not be into small groups and for a good reason. For example, you already have friends or you don't like some of the people in your group or you don't trust some of the people in your group. You might feel judged. You don't want to talk to other people because you just don't like doing that. This list could go on and on. Maybe it's a different reason. Maybe you find yourself in a small group wondering what are we supposed to be doing here? Or counting the minutes until you can leave to go get something to eat. You may not even go to the small group. Instead, when service ends, you just bounce. Sometimes, you may simply wonder, what's the point of us doing small groups? And that's why we're gonna talk about this for the next few minutes. Let's start by taking it all the way back to the very beginning, like the very beginning. You may have heard of the first chapter of the very first book of the Bible called Genesis. It starts with, in the beginning God created, followed by a whole chapter and list of things that God created and how God ranked each thing. When God created light, God labeled it was good. When God created the sky, he said it was good. The land and the plants, good. Sun and the moon, good. Animals in the ocean and the sky, good. Animals on land, you guessed it, good. When God looked at his creation in human form, this is what he said. It's not good for man to be alone. Did you catch that? The first not good thing in all of creation was being alone. What's my point? Well, it's this. We were wired to not be alone. We were designed for connection, but you know that already because you know what your friendships mean to you. You can tell that you're wired for connection by the way you feel that weird disappointment when you FaceTime your friend and they don't respond. You know you're wired for connection by the way you feel when something terrible or unexpected happens and you just need to talk to someone. So why does small group matter if you already have friends? Well, small group matters because your spiritual growth matters. This is more than just somebody to hang out with or to scroll on Instagram with. This is secure, unfailing acceptance and connection with others. Let's take a look at something from Hebrews. Don't miss this, this is a big deal. The writer of Hebrews is talking to Jewish Christians, which basically meant that they were facing execution and excommunication because of their belief in Jesus. This wasn't just saying, hey, if it's not too much to ask, you could skip Netflix for a night and make time to come to small group. No, this ask from the writer of Hebrews was saying, meeting together consistency, consistently is worth putting your life on the line. It was hard times. The writer of Hebrews stresses, don't give up meeting together. Why is it so important? Because we know at least two things happen when we meet together. Hope happens when we meet together. What's hope? It's being convinced that our future is better than our now and that we need that. Without hope, 
we don't end racism, we don't fight global warming, and we don't rescue the abused. Without hope, instead of finding a reason to fight for what's good and right, we let evil make itself at home in our world. When we meet together, it reminds us that there's hope for our own lives, hope for better days ahead, hope for the next week, and the next week might be better. Love and good deeds happen when we get together. We make each other better. We make each other stronger. Another writer said it this way when he said, iron sharpens iron, meaning we can make each other better. Meeting together calls us and holds us accountable to set higher standards of who we should become. And maybe the most important phrase in that whole passage is not giving up. Showing up and connecting requires reprioritizing your schedule and guarding the time that you get with your group. Meeting together doesn't always seem easy when there are other things that you could be doing. The truth is, we all need somebody, even an adult, especially an adult outside of our families who can help us figure out life. That's what your leaders signed up to be. And here's what's wild about this group of adults. They actually want to do this. They signed up for real conversations about your life. They don't need to fake or perfect vision of you. They signed up to be here with you every week for the real you. Here's what I'm getting at. This idea of community and Hebrews is more than just a group of friends. This wasn't your average group of friends watching football together or the people you make TikToks with. This was a ride or die. These were the kind of friends whose leaders were there to encourage you, cheer for you, say the real stuff to you, and listen when you say the real stuff to them. They were here to love you enough to tell you what's real even if you don't like what they're saying. Stick up for you when somebody talks bad about you or tries to hurt you. This is bigger than hanging out. This is what we call community. And here's the deal. The people who were meeting together in the original church, they weren't all alike. They weren't all friends before they came to church. They didn't all agree on every little thing. In fact, if I can be real with you for a second, part of being a mature person is understanding that you don't have to be like people to love them. I know some of you are thinking, yeah, but my small group sounds nothing like that. But imagine with me for just a second, what if it could? What would it take? The fact is, what's said in this verse can be true for your small group experience. Think about it, meeting together, motivating each other towards love and good works, and encouraging each other can be your reality. But let's be honest, you have to be willing to put something into it. In other words, when it comes to your small group, you get out what you put in, but how? What could and should we put into our small group experience? I'm sure there's a lot, but let's start with just a few things. First, be present. Commit to showing up for your small group every week. Give it a chance. Be open to what could possibly happen. You never know what you could get out of the time you spend with your group. Don't pretend in small group. Try to give it your all and see what happens. Second, create a safe space. This is not about being nice. This is about being real. What happens when you're in a place where you know what you said will be talked about later by the people in your small group? You say less, you pretend more. In a way, you become fake because you feel as if you have to be. A real safe place is possible, but it takes fierce commitment to protecting the safety of your group. And third, make it personal. Remember, what you get out is what you put in. You can't expect somebody to share if you don't share as well. You have to make the effort to get to know people and care about them as well. Send the text, start the conversation. Sit with someone from your small group and service who you don't normally sit with. Be willing to talk it out if you need to, even when it's hard. What's the point? The point is, we were made for more than surface level relationships. We were made for a relationship with God that we experience with other people in a very real way. We can literally alter our experience at church and ultimately grow our relationship with God by alter altering the investment that we put into our small group. Maybe this sounds like something you want. Maybe you know your current small group, it seems impossible. But just imagine with me, what if this was your small group experience? How different would your high school years look if you had a group of people who were always showing up for each other, safe and real with each other, and they knew you, like the real you? That's what small group can be. Whether that's true for your small group, and it's entirely up to you if it is. And that's what we want to talk about when we meet this week. Because when it comes to small group, you get out what you put in.